this evening, I have one of the best of God's servants here to give us the word of God. Amen. He's, I call him a brother. He's faithful to God's work, the kingdom. Amen. And he has a single heart. And I mean, there, there are many with diverse hearts. And he has a single heart. I believe that if many people will emulate him, life will be very easy for all of us. And I believe he's built with enough experience for at least 20 something years to be able to speak to us on what ministry is about and how you can be an ordinary person and God will raise you to the next level. Let's be on our feet and receive the ministry of Reverend David Ampakosa. Amen. Shall I please be seated in the presence of the Lord? Um, I thank God for this great opportunity to be here this evening. And I also thank God for the life of the Father. Amen. Shall we appreciate the Father of the house? I always say one thing that a great man is not somebody who has seen somebody making it and walks to the person and says, I knew you would be great. But a great man is the one who sees you when you are nobody and he's able to tell you that you'll be great. And he makes sure you get there. That is a great man. So the, uh, the father of the house is a great man. Oh, can we put our hands together for him? Yes, years ago, I was hurriedly in a hurry to join the military. And I love the military. If I see the uniform, it kills me. I melt down. So I, I had a zeal to join the ministry. Then one day there was a service and a prophet came and said, he was prophesying. So when he was prophesying, I was laughing at him. I said, hey, we, we want to wear soldier uniform and kick Mora and jack up. And when we are in town, people will be running away. You, you are here saying that uh, work of God, work of God. Then I live with a, a gentleman in a house. I've seen him. We all play. We do everything together. One day, the gentleman came and said, he's going to do fasting, carrying mattress and a bucket. I looked at him, and I started laughing. I said, Oko school by, you know. I said, we be hello, kakra. What for bucket? What for uh, mattress? Oko, I fasting. Those days we go to church. I mean, we, are, we live in a pastor's house, so we've seen it all. Hey, he went first three days. He came. He said, We are going to have all night. Excuse me to use that one. Francis, dear. He started. One day he came. When he was talking to us, we were normal. He said, Everybody, lift up your hands. We laugh in our head, but we lifted up our hands. What we could see was everybody was on the floor. Then he said, sit down. Everybody sat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We were all steady because we've seen something different. And that thing we saw changed the life of all of us. <laughs> it changed our lives. We didn't see it as a joke again. We were all aiming to be like him. And those were the days the, the, the youth set up in the church changed. Because those days we were just there. We when we come to church, we don't come because we are coming to hear the word of God. We come because um, we will meet our friends and we will talk and we will go and eat yogurt after church. We will talk. That is the reason why we, we came. There, as for the preaching and the singing, and the, that's not part of our life. We, we, to meet our friends. But when he changed us, it will shock you. 7 a.m., every youth is in church. We pray for two hours before the service starts. And you realize that our services was with fire. And I can, I can bet on that. Anyone who was part of that group <laughs> has made it in life. I can testify to that. What he taught us Wherever we found ourselves, it worked for us. 
And I'm here to tell somebody this evening, if you will just listen. Monday, Pastor Francis was here. He talked about being thankful. He talked about following the instructions. Pastor Charles was here on Tuesday, giving us the realms, the way we should work, and having knowledge, having data to, to do things. And yesterday, Daddy was here. He also talked about we thinking big, but starting little. One thing I have known is that <laughs> you can de decide to listen to us this evening, but you can either make a decision to make it or you can make a decision to fail. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? You can either make a decision to make it or you make a decision to fail. You see, a lot of us think we have desire, but we don't have desire. We will for things. I wish, I wish I can be like Reverend Yali. I wish I can be like uh, Pastor Charles. I wish I can be like Reverend Jonah. I wish I can be like Pastor Tony. It's a wish. And wishes, <laughs> everybody can wish. But what will make us become what they are is the desire. Somebody say the desire. You see, the, uh, the attendance of this service proves to me that people don't desire to prosper. You didn't hear me. <laughs> I said the attendance of this revived thy works should prove to you that people don't have desire to prosper. But they are the ones who will complain every day and every night because desire is the strong will. Eh? Strong will backed by power and ability to pay the price to become what you are. You see, you can't even pay the price to come and listen to the message for you to prosper. How can you prosper? Look at what we have learned from Monday, Tuesday, today, Wednesday, and today. We, I'm going to share with you. You don't have the desire, but you hear the person praying, oh Lord, prosper me, prosper me, prosper me. It's not about that. Do you have the desire Make a decision. <laughs> because decision is a strong desire backed by the ability to pay the price. That is when you have made a decision. So a lot of us, why are you seated here this evening? You decided to come. If you have not decided to come, you wouldn't be here. So if you decide to prosper, you would have start in this seminars. And one of the things we were we we're talking as pastor, we said the people who need it most will not be seated here. <laughs> and they will come complaining. Okay, through my life tonight, I'm going to share with you some points. Things that makes you richer than money. <laughs> you see, a lot of us have a mindset that when I have the money, I am done. We, in our life, it, we are struggling chasing the money. And I, I believe somebody is not here this evening because he's chasing money. <laughs> I'm going to share with you things eh, that makes you richer than money. I believe about 50% or 60% of us seated here have a mindset that it's only money that can make us rich. No, 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 no. There's nothing like that. One thing you must understand is that what is on you controls what is around you. What is on you controls what is around you. <laughs> it controls what is around you. You see, there are certain qualities, if they, if they are on you, they control certain things around you. Today, I say I'm sharing with you something that makes you richer than money. It controls things around you. And one of the things you must understand is that you must have the ability to lose certain things to have certain things. So if you are not ready to lose it, you can't have it. That's why the Bible says he who wants to keep his life will lose it. But he who keeps it will have it and have it more. So, 
a lot of us, we don't want to lose it. Can I do some illustration here? No. Reverend Karim, can you please come? Sam, can you please come? I have put a lot of money. Who is Reverend Charles to you? Is your father? Is your okay? I have put about five thousand dollars at the back there. I want the two of you to go for it. Yes, I want the two of you to go for it. What will you do? You do what? You do what? Okay, it's about twenty thousand dollars. All of you go and pick it. Can you give me a microphone? I want to hear his. I want you to hear his answer. <laughs> uh huh. You go for it and bring it to him. Why would you go for it and bring it to him? Don't you want yours? Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? He said he he is your father. So if he has it. It's equally mine. So imagine he goes, he picks ten thousand dollars. You go, you pick ten thousand dollars. You give it to him. How much does he have? Twenty thousand dollars. And do you know that everything you need, he can provide for you. But you can have this situation where you, all of you, will rush there, and I think you, the least you can pick within a second is maybe you will pick hundred dollars and he will pick two hundred dollars. But within a split second, when you get there, you can pick it alone, give it to him, and whatever you need, you will have more than you would have picked when you rush with him. So it illustrates, and it can you can sit. <laughs> it tells you, you see, a lot of us, the reason why we are not being rich is that we don't want to do things for others. We always want to do it for ourselves. <laughs> but we, it, you have to have a mindset. You see, a lot of us don't want to do things for people for free. Every time we have a mind, that is my first point. We have a mindset that anything I do, I must get money. Anything I do, I must get something out of it. You know, you, you, you don't, you, 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 you hear this. I was working with a company. I was earning 90 Ghana cities then. It was money. Traveling from Malam to Tema all the day of my life. Doing, I think I've, I've, I've graduated. I have my certificate. I have a job. I'm doing my job. I'm doing well. Then one day, the assignment I was doing was not being done. My father calls me and he sits me down. He said, David, you know you are into ministry and you do a lot of work in ministry. Since you left and you went chasing money, the ministry <laughs> is running down. Pray to God and make a decision. If, it, if I will advise you, leave the chasing of money and come and concentrate on ministry. I looked at him and said, I've heard you. Then there I wrote my resignation letter. I sent it to my boss. When I gave it to my boss, my, my boss, when he comes to my office, he's coming to my chairman, my chairman. When he comes to my office, he's coming to talk about his containers. No, I don't fault him. But that day he entered my office, the first thing he said, David, you are not going. And I said, said why? He said, you can't go. As I said, why can't I go? He said, since you came, I have realized that I have increased from three to four containers to ten containers a week. And if you go, I am going to be at a loss. So what, do you, what are you going to do? Then I told him, I want to go and feather my education. He said, don't worry, go and feather your education. When you, go, when you come on vacation, come and work, I'll pay you. Then he asked again, is it a salary? I said, sir, it's not a, it's, I will double your salary for you. But I told him, sir, to, to the extent that he called my mom and told my mom, talk to your son for me. 
let him come and work for me. But I chose, like Moses said, <laughs> to enjoy the suffering with the children of Israel than to spend a minute enjoying in the kingdom of the world. <laughs> a lot of us, one of the things that is destroyed that we think money is everything, so we can't do things for free. Hear me. The Bible makes us to understand that Jesus was preaching, and whilst he was preaching, the Bible said the people pressed on him. And whilst they pressed on him, he saw a boat there, and he saw two fishermen mending their nets. He asked one of them, he jumped into the boat, he said, can I use this boat? What did Peter do? Peter rode him into the water. He preached the word. And after preaching the word, Peter did not ask whether I didn't catch fish, so pay me for using my boat. Pay me for use. Some of the boats use outboard motors. They use fuel. Let's put it in today's context. They use fuel. Pay me for my fuel. He didn't talk about that. The moment Jesus finished, he said, pick your net and launch your net into the deep for a catch. He did it for free, but he was able to catch meat that was enough for him to call others to come and enjoy. The problem with you is that you don't want to do things for free. Anything, you want money. So by the time you realize, you get a little, you don't get much. That is why the father of the house has said something. He said, <laughs> free things are very expensive. So he explained to us and he said that when you do a work for me and you have to charge me 50 Ghana cities and I pay you 50 Ghana cities, it's done. You have received small. But if you don't charge me for the 50 Ghana cities and you leave me to go and your wife goes to the hospital and she's giving birth and you need money urgently and you have to raise about 5,000 Ghana cities. And if you don't get crying, you get like 1,000 cities from me. Which is bigger than the 50 you took. So a lot of us have a mindset that anything I do, I must get something. If I'm not getting something, I won't give my all. That's why you are poor. If I'm not getting anything, so like you are a chorister in church. Church is not paying you. So, oh, I'll come anyhow. The day they start paying me, if they say I should come 6 o'clock, I'll come 6 o'clock. If they say I should sit here to 10 o'clock, I'll sit here to 10 o'clock. But if they are not paying me, uh, oh, let's play last. Year. But one thing you must know, you see, there are a crowd of witnesses watching us. That is one thing you don't know. There are a crowd of witnesses watching us. And sometimes, the way you dedicate and do things for free, this crowd of witnesses can be a blessing to you. But you, because you don't see them, you see it like it is you and the person you are working for. Or you see it like it is between you and the person. Let me take what I have to take and go. I think I'm not talking to somebody here. Things that will make you richer <laughs> than money. The Bible said, Jacob had lost everything and he slept on a stone. He woke up, he anointed the stone. And the Bible said he got to a well and he found out that there were a flock of sheep there. And what is done is that they put a stone on the well. And when it gets to time for them to water the sheep, they water them. Is that not it? He sat there and the man came and he was talking to them. And he said, do you know this man? talking about his uncle. He would ask them, the people say, he asked, what is, oh, is all well with him? They said, all is well with him. And he saw a lady coming with a flock of sheep, which was um, uh, Rahel. Hey, yeah, Rah Rahel. And the Bible said, what did he do? Even the, and he, the people said, this is your uncle's daughter. Could it be like the, if the people were lying to him? The Bible said, he fetched water. Eh? And he fed the sheep which were not his. He did everything freely without considering whether he will earn something because he has lost everything. He didn't consider what he will, he will earn. He just fed them. Gave them the water. And after that, he kissed Rahel. And the Bible said, Rahel ran back to the house and told his father what Jacob has done. And the Bible said the father left the house and came to where Jacob was and kissed his forehead. And Jacob lived in their house for one month. <laughs> Not paying food. He did it for free. He had free accommodation. You see, a lot of us, we are not making it in life because sometimes everything we want money. 
The little thing you do, I want money. Even if the person says, I won't pay you, you judge the person to take your money. You fight the person. I am a testimony to that. There are a lot of things I've done to, for people for free. And out of that, it has opened more doors for me than any other thing I have done for people which I have taken money. Even if you don't believe anybody, Paul said we are an epistle. I am an epistle of it. I do things for people free, not considering what I will earn. Not considering, and you see, one of the problems is that when we are doing it for free, sometimes we, 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 we cry in our heart. We mama. That's why we are not getting the reward we need to get out of it. But if you open up your heart, somebody say open up your heart. Open up your heart. Whether I'm getting money, whether I'm not getting anything, one thing I have come to understand is that open your heart and do it. One time I was with one of the church members who was cleaning the washroom in daddy's office and somebody spoke to her the way the person was not supposed to speak to her and she started crying me this work uh, and i entered i said who have sent you why not smile stop and go uh, you see we have and i said you see if you do this you cannot be blessed let me teach you something here Every man is vulnerable. And vulnerability is not only weakness. Hear me and hear me well. Vulnerability is not only weakness. Vulnerability also is your soft spot for something. So if you are able to touch the soft spot of a person, What do you get in return? <laughs> You'll be favored. You see, sometimes what you do free touches the soft spot of somebody. So, you see, sometimes God becomes vulnerable when you, live, you worship him. Like Pastor Francis was saying on Monday. And you thank him for everything. You begin to thank him. He has a soft face. He says, oh, let me release the blessing for Clement the way he's blessing me, the way even he doesn't have money, he's going hungry, and the way he's lying on the floor rolling and thanking me. I've not done it yet. But you see, when you have a soft spot for somebody, you, they, when they ask for something, you easily give it out. So when you begin to do certain things for people free, you touch their soft spot. <laughs> Somebody say, what can make you richer than money? Tell somebody, there is something that can make you richer than money. You touch the soft spot of the person, Clement, you can't sit. <laughs> you did everything you want money. <coughs> you want money. But one thing you must know, money is the least. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> you can find the next thing I'll talk about is you must have value. Somebody say value. value. Somebody say value. value. Somebody say value. value. Somebody say value. value. You see, a lot of us, we don't have value. If you are to leave the church today, what would the church miss about you? A lot of us, the day we decide to tell our boss, boss, a German major, he will say, go. He will clap for you. And say, you don't have any value. You don't have anything. You don't have anything to, to, to put on the table to qualify you. You see, one thing we all have to know is that value is made up of a skill and virtue. So you can have the skill, but if you don't have the virtue, you don't have value. <laughs> so you can sing very well but if you don't have the character you don't have value you are well educated when it comes to uh, internet connection when it comes to internet network when it comes to things you are the brilliant person about it but you don't have character 
So when you are employed, the things, the virtue you don't have makes you to lose it. You see, every person is in the, every person can lose his or her job. Is that not it? But you must have the ability that will make it difficult for you to be replaced. That is value. Uh, no, get it right. Everybody is replaceable. <laughs> but you must develop the ability <laughs> that will make you or make it difficult for you to be replaced. <laughs> I said, there are things that can make you richer than money. Can, can I imagine, or can you imagine the day you are not in church? What happens? Can you imagine? What value? You see, you, you, you are not productive. <laughs> You don't bring any, you, 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 you say you are a chorister, you say you are a member of the church. What productivity have you brought to the church? That you, you, you show yourself that when we come and we say today, we are writing the history of bridge ministries. What will let your name appear in? Somebody say shouting. Somebody, they, they will write, it's like when they are writing uh, the, the poster, the obituary. And the man has a lot of children. You see the prominent ones and the valuable ones, they write their name. Uh, Mensa and brother and sisters. They write, they write. And when they get to the, the, the those who don't have value, they write and others. So some of you, if we are considering the value you have added to Bridge Ministries today, you are part of the others. There is no one thing. There isn't one thing we can look out and say this is the value of Benedicta, this is the value of Rukaya. This is what she brings on the table. I think I'm not talking to somebody here. Ask somebody, what is your value? <laughs> you see, <laughs> you let me go back and go to Bible. Intimidate, I mean, go to Bible, Kakra. Take me to the book of 1 Samuel 16. The verse number 14. The Bible makes us to understand that when the evil spirit <laughs> ready, let's go, let's read together. Departed from Saul and distressed spirits from the Lord troubled him. The next verse, quickly, you can sit. And Saul seven said what to him? Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Yes, go on quickly. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is what? Who is a? On what? And he should be. He sh eh? It shall be that he, he will play it with his hands. And, with the di and the distressing spirit from God is upon you shall be well. The next verse. Give me King James. Give me King James. Go back. Huh. One, let's go. A cunning player on the app. He's what? Skillful. Let's go to the next verse. And Saul so said unto his servants, Provide me now that man that can play well and bring him to me. The next verse. And then they answered one of the servants, Behold, we have seen the son of who? The son of who? The son of who? Yes. Uh -huh, continue. What did he say? That is... <laughs> so if we are looking for somebody to do something now in bridge ministries, do you have that value? Listen to what they said. He has... That is cunning in playing. A mighty valiant man. <laughs> A man of what? Can you be around the king that you are not a man of war? So when the king is attacked, what will you do? You are not going to call the guards. A man of what? And prudent in matters. And a calmly person. 
<laughs> what what will, will be said about you? What value do you have? The company that has employed you, what value have you brought into the company? What have you added? And you sit there and you say, I'm not making anything. Every month you pretend to work and your bosses pretend to pay you. I think I'm not talking to somebody. You see, let me, let me share it. When I was working in a company in Tema, and when, one thing my father taught me is whatsoever your hands find it to do, do it with your mind. And that principle, I have worked with it all my life. So when I got there, Ejumano, Ejumano, hey, me yema, me a me body ni huse my Ejuma. And you see graduates who have the certificate that have come to me, and they will ask me, why do you work like that? Is the company for your father? But they have forgotten yesterday that he said it, that he who takes good care of another man's own will have his own. You are waiting for you to have your own before you work well. Eh? You are waiting for you to have you, you are a liar. You yes, see, as Pastor Francis said on Monday, do you have small and can give you? If he gets big amount, he can give you. Somebody's own. Wait me and yeah, who the idea man have any ye. You see, last month, Charles was preaching and he said, something you do continuously for about 21 days becomes a part of you. So it would just all be a bro. It's a character building in you. You take that same character to your own business. <laughs> Somebody say value. Somebody say value. You think, oh, oh, my man, oh, Nadia, when you, you say, today, dear, I am tired, though. Let me sleep. When my boss calls me, I'm sick. When you have your own business and you are running, you will tell yourself today, I'm, and look, you know, somebody is, when somebody is commanding you, cry, you couldn't give value. And when you are commanding yourself. That one you are telling yourself you can give value. That one you can decide to go to work at 6 p.m. You can decide to go at 12 p.m. It's your work. <laughs> but you see, what you do at somebody's own, the value you add to somebody's work is the same value and a magnitude of it you add to yours and yours will prosper. You see, a lot of us, the problem we are having, that is why we are not making it and we think we need money, is that we don't have value. Somebody say value. Somebody say value. Somebody say value. value. Take me to the book of First Kings. Seven. First Kings seven. Let's read something there. You see, you must have value. He said what? But Solomon was building his own house. No, not the verse one. Take me to the verse number 13. That will help me quickly. I don't want to waste time. I don't have enough time. And King Solomon searched and fetched who? Oh, read, 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 read with me. Of what? Out of Tar. Uh huh. Let's go. Ready? Go. He was a widow's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are qualified, no? You, you are not a widow's son, no? And let's go. Uh huh. A worker in what? A worker in what? A worker in what? Me, I think one value I have is loyalty. <laughs> and I can't, I can't lose it for anything. He was what? A worker in what? He is filled with what? And understanding. And the cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrote all his works. The next verse. For he cast two pillars of brass. That is when King Solomon was building. He needed this man. He had to go and fetch him. You see, if you have value, it doesn't matter the hole you are in. Kings will come looking for you. You didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. Kings will fetch you. I tell you, there's something that makes you richer than money. The last scripture. 
<laughs> Exodus 31, the verse number 12. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Yes, co continue. Speak unto the children of Israel. Take me to the verse number 40. I think the owl. Hey. Exodus 31, the verse number 11, please. Go to um, 9. Eight, seven, six. And behold, I have given with who? Him. Okay, let's start from the verse number. I would like the verse number four. That will help me. The verse number four. So that you understand what I'm trying to say. To, di to do a diverse Cunning works to work in gold and silver and in brass. Okay, you take me to verse number two. I think the verse number two will do it. The guy's name is there. Daddy talked about him yesterday. See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Har, of the tribe of Judah. The next verse. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. All manner. All manner. There's a stress on the all manner. All manner. <laughs> I love it when we were about to build this uh, church building and we sat in the office. I'm talking about value. And when we sat in the office, we were having the church building meeting. And we had contractors, we had people, they were speaking, 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 they were speaking. They were speaking. Hey. Myself and one gentleman, we were quiet. Because what they were talking about, we were lost. We realized that our value did not place there. So we kept quiet. Then the father of the house, after speaking, said everybody in your position Aye. then they start one stood up i am so so and so then you mention something let me imagine Ooh. You say, mm. so when it gets to me what would i say will be upon the value I, I remember reverend charles was there will be a will be a reverend charles there you better shall see now you qualify no you there when we get to the decoration it's your job so you there why on the wire satisfied now come in it another gentleman no more they were mentioning they were mentioning they were mentioning they were mentioning they were mentioning, they were mentioning. so when they got to the gentleman they asked him you was a still bender <laughs> when he said still better i did me he did. when they asked me i said me they do see kana me na meet ya we are done chief payer so after the meeting, we left. Then it got to when the building was about to start. Now we were looking for the the express, the candy men who had value. We were looking for them. That we should mark the profiling. It took them two days. Near two to back up. Then kakra no mako paper. No more be. Then we'll be working. Then daddy will come. Why is the work is not going on? You know, what I mean? daddy, where the send the call the expert to the value people, and the one who had value but looked like a widow's son, who was in the the still bender, woke up and said, "Daddy, this thing we can do it. I'll get a friend here. The two of us can do this profiling. We can do this. We can do that. We can do that." The next morning, they were here. When we came, they have marked it. The car started digging. Where were the experts? The value people we knew. You see, some of you, you like talking. Your talking does not have value. You see, let us see the value. It is not about the talking. As for talking, 
we all can talk. We all can talk. Let us see it. Yeah, daddy, me, Basenta, no, oh, the mommy, that's a Josephine Mone Clement with a globe in a moody. Who the mommy Basenta, no, now, open see the Basenta, the mouth. I said, I watch your value. Let us see it when you are not be appointed and you'll be appointed. I think, I think this evening somebody is angry with me. <laughs> I said, the men of value, after that, after that day, they have not stepped on this compound till we have gotten where we have gotten to. I think I'm not talking to somebody here. Somebody said I must be a man of value. Eh? What difference does it make with the person you are going to compete with? At a job place, what value do you add up? Muni na mukita certificate baako. You see, you see when companies are writing their uh, adverts for employment, then they state there. Sometimes those days they say no, no matter Excel is a plus. Anana nyesa ano no mucheno. They write Excel is a plus. So the difference between you. The value between the people and the money accounting, you know, extra on our DBT, you know, is a value. I'm, I think I'm not pitching somebody here. Ask somebody, what value do you have? <laughs> I think I'm not pitching this evening. You see, today, you see, as Daddy said, it's a school. We will come and we will enjoy all. The next thing. It's integrity. Somebody say integrity. You see, in this world, there are seven currencies. And out of the seven currencies, money is the least. <laughs> integrity is one of the currencies. I say, I'm... And yes, you can't make me cast it. I'm maybe more ten thousand dollars. No, no, today I'm not. I'm, I don't know. Pastor Francis more dealing with that. So this, this one's what oh the if you add this one to what we have done, eh, you'll be a billionaire. Wow. Somebody say integrity. integrity. Take me to the book of Psalm 15. Psalm 15. Lord, who shall abide in, the, in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy place? These are questions. The next verse. He that walketh uprightly. He that does what? Clement, you can see too. <laughs> he that does what? And worketh what? And worketh what? Uh huh. Go on. Speak the truth in his heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Somebody say integrity. <laughs> the next verse. He that by backeth not his own tank. <laughs> nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Mm -hmm. In whose eyes a veiled person is contained, but he honors them and fear the Lord, and he that swelleth to his own head and changeth not. He honors them. You see, you don't have integrity. Somebody say integrity. integrity. What time does service start? Eh? Six? Eh? So, how many of us come at six? How many of us told daddy, before the service starts, we'll be here? You see, one of, one of the things is about integrity is that you don't live an integral life. You see, a lot of us our lives are made of differences. 
there's a difference between our social life. There's a difference between our professional life. There's a difference between our private life. And there's a difference between our spiritual life. So, all these lives, there is a way we act there. So, sometimes when you come to church, you are the best angel we can find. But when we get to your house, cha, what that, daddy will hear, you think he's seeing a different image. Or you, you are a twin. Or the, the, you are a, two different people. When you, 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 you leave the house, you metamorphose into an angel. When you leave church, I think I'm not preaching to somebody here. Hey, if daddy makes a mistake and walks to your boss and asks your boss, how is this my son? How is this my daughter? I think daddy will turn and say, I don't think you have been coming to bridge meetings. You have been coming to the services. Because what we will hear, but one thing is that integrity is one thing. If you are truthful, you are truthful in everything. That is integrity. So you can't tell me me there eba had him din ukre o but eba business there ah me de be wo we ni sisi ah me ye wa zan sisi ah we eh pastor ntina me consider no nka nya pastor kranka ono kra me de wo nani you are not a man of integrity <coughs> integrity means you are same in everything You don't say one thing and leave another. That one, one person I have learned a lot of integrity from is the father of the house. <laughs> ha! You know one thing. When we come to church, eh, every prayer, you do know one, one of my prayers, today let me confess. One of my prayers is that any time he stands here to say that we are going to do this. Eh? The moment he says it, we have all the money available, then we do it. That Every time, that's why I pray. Or I pray that he doesn't say, we are going to buy instruments. We are going to buy iron rods. We are going to buy this. Anytime, my prayer is that he will not say that. Because when he says it, when I leave here Sunday evening, I don't sleep. Because I know definitely by 5 a.m., either I will receive a WhatsApp message or I will receive a call. Ah, daddy, that's how they scan and boy, no. Eh? The people, and then, he said, so far as we have said we will do this on Monday. See, you be rash, I see, I see you. You be heavy, no. Wherever we will enter to get money to do it. And warn to you when we get the money and you are delaying. They say go and bring the iron rods and you are at the iron rods of wait, waiting, waiting, to say, waiting. You hear the call come. Hey! What a, why is the iron rods? Bring the iron rod because by the time the people come, I have to prove to them that I am a man of integrity. If I say we should do this, we do it. For him, yeah. So me, eh, when, when he stands here, he stands, tomorrow morning, see, Papa, yeah, this man. Tomorrow morning, sometimes uh, my bomb plans for tomorrow morning. The moment he said tomorrow morning is cancelled, because I know the pressure will come because you, he has to deliver tomorrow. When you are a seamstress, you, you you run your own business. When you tell somebody I'm delivering on Tuesday, do you deliver on Tuesday? <laughs> and the funny thing they always say is that Obeti Asie, Oti Oti Asie we he. And the the, the 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 big problem is that you even call the person and tell the person, unfortunately, due to these problems, I can't meet the deadline. But give me tomorrow morning six a.m. It will be done. And you make sure tomorrow morning 6 a.m. 
is there. But you tell the person, tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., 6 a.m., then you switch off your phone. They will call, 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 call. Then when, they, when you, you, you are ready, after two weeks, then you switch on your phone. My phone say yo. I can go be yeah, my phone. Let me cry me lose your number. Now, me reshow your number. Now, now me. Until I am a decrass, I will cry what for me. I'm happy that you have called me. My phone got spot, so I, I've lost all my contacts. So I'm even happy that you have called. Your thing I have finished, so you cannot come for. You don't have integrity. I think I'm not pushing somebody this evening. <laughs> somebody says things that can make you richer than money you see when, when you deliver the person is able to recommend you to another person because he knows you fail now your boss like he's your pastor on the crowd one need two weeks no go introduce my big man be you will be you are you will be poor forever the reason why you are poor is that you don't have integrity <laughs> i think i'm not talking to somebody here you see integrity doesn't mean you don't make mistakes right don't get me wrong so you see when it may be you are doing something, you make a little mistake. I told you, you don't have integrity. No, no, no. I beg you. That, that's not what I'm talking about. No, that's not what I'm talking about. As far as we are humans, we make mistakes. But integrity deals with the integral part. You see, last I was telling somebody that I learned it from my father. That if you are going to do a work for somebody. And you look through your heart, scan your heart. <laughs> And you know you can finish in the next two days. Tell the person, I'll finish in the next five days. This is what I learned from my father. So, if you have promised the person five days, and in two days you finish, what will he do? He will clap for you. Yeah. Is that what it? He will clap for you because you gave him five days. Where we are in two days. I'm sure you are contract to be on the I'm sure you are on the I'm sure. You, you will die. Because he realized that you told him five days, but you have delivered in two days. You, you, the person can pick, and my, the father of the house does that. He will pick a call and call his friend and say, Hey, this guy I've met, if you give him this assignment, within one week he can finish it. You, what can be said about you? Today, it's like the room is too quiet too. Eh? <laughs> eh? It's like the woman. Ask somebody, do you have integrity? Hmm. Somebody say integrity. Somebody say integrity. Who are you? Are you are you a half caste? Cut a cast. Albino. We, we, you see, one, one thing I love so much about the fact, he said, let me know you are a thief. Let, it, yeah, let me know you are a thief. You, when it comes to money, me maybe in far Honda, because I know you. He, say, he says it makes it difficult for him to trust you if you can't be who you are beside him. And a lot of us, the reason why our bosses cannot promote us or lift us to a certain level is because we don't have integrity. They don't know who we really are. Your yay is not your yay. Your nay is not your nay. And small thing, you will compromise. Small thing, small pressure, you will compromise. It will shock you that like we are saying right here, right here, right here. Let somebody come out with a cutlass and ask some of us, do we still believe in God?
Do you believe in God? The, not the, or the, or the, or the second entry from Che. Do you believe in God? What, what will you do? And then me, my dad will be the invited me, and then you may. I saw that crowd here. A friend invited me here. I am not part of them. This thing called. I have not heard the name of the church before. Uh, you said the church is called what? You see, <laughs> this is my first time. Me, me, when you, I, I was in the house, I said I won't come. The person said I should come. He was forcing me. You see what you have put me into? Uh, uh, somebody who said the pastor is owing me. I'm just coming to collect my money. Who are you? And then, and then, and then today I, I'm, 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 I'm hitting certain things. Eh? What do you add to your boss's job? You see, and you go to a company and there are guys in the company who at the end of the month, they bypass some of the goods and they go and sell. So when they sell, they, ah, cool. Charlie, this boy, this boy, this is what you have been doing. You get money, huh? Okay, next week, I'll add two to it. When you sell your two, sell these two for me. You don't have integrity. I remember when I joined my company, there was a scenario there. We know we export tuna. We don't sell on the local market. So what the guys do is that you are not supposed to take the product out. When you are within the factory, you can eat any amount you want to eat, but you can't carry the product out. So they want to carry it out. And when you are carrying it out and they see even a can on you, you'll be arrested. So do you know what they were doing? When they have to go and ship the container, the day they want to steal some of the products, they will say there is no seal. There is a seal we put on the container. When we lock it, you, nobody can open it unless it gets to the destination. Then they will crack it. So they will tell the office that when they when the shipping company says they don't have seals, so there is no seal. So they have to lock with padlock. So that is when they pack the product. Then they put it inside. So when they get to the port, then they remove the ones they, they have put on the quantity, then they sell it. So when I was brought to that department to come and work from accounts to the packaging department, ah, we were cutting the product, uh, they, you have to put uh, 1670, that's 1670. Ah, we have put the 1670, we add highlights, we highlight some of the products so that when it gets to the destination, they will check to see if they are the right product. So they are part of the total quantity, which makes it the 1670. Now the guy, I saw the guy with about five cartons coming that we should add it to. And I said, ah, the shipment says 670. So why are we adding five? You, you, you know, ah, you have to add it to it because when, the, and I said, no, when I came here, you, you are the one who trained me. You told me that highlights are part of the total quantity. So when did it change? He was talking. He got angry. Then he moved off. So, it continued, it continued. So now they decided that they won't talk to me again. So one day I was there, and there is a lady who works with her. The lady came to me and said, Charlie, I'm confused. So how? And I'm saying, how am I saying? I'm saying, see, I'll buy a moon escape you. I'm saying, Maju pay. Have I taken your salary? I don't take your salary. I don't take your allowance. So why have I taken your money? But if I wasn't a person of integrity, I would have said, Charlie, for five can when you ten. You drag. Let turn five, you know. Let for five, let for five in a bremen. And a lot of us we burn the curves everywhere. You see, your boss is not promoting you. You think your you see that one time I was telling my wife something, I said, sometimes you think bosses are fools. Who? They don't see. You think they don't watch. 
If they are not watching, there is somebody who is not part of the company but lives around, but is watching. You see, one day somebody will walk to your company and tell your boss, this man, don't lose this man. If you lose this man, your company, you won't understand. They will promote the person, you'll be there. <laughs> Integrity is not about you coming there and coming early and closing. No. What are the values? What, what, what do you adorn? The things you are being taught in church, be truthful. Be, be, what are you doing it in your company? Or you, you are truthful only in church and you are not truthful at the other places? They, my fa oh, yes, I won't say that one. Because if I say it next time, when they are doing it to you, you will know. I will say another one. You are giving 200 Ghana to go and buy nails. You get there, they say the nails has been reduced to 150. Praise God. Ah. Hey God, like you are a miracle worker. Hey God, I didn't know you can work miracles like that. So when you, when you come, Daddy, this is the receipt to... They said 200. Boss, this is the receipt. They said 200. You are not a man of integrity. I've been sent. I said, the things I'm saying is not somebody is telling me you. I've lived it. I was sent somewhere to go and pick something for my father. And the moment I get there, <laughs> the moment I got there, the person gave me what I'm supposed to take for my father. Gave another envelope. Told him, this envelope, he said, what is it for? He said, it's for you. I said, no, I can't take it. One who sent me didn't say I should come for another. He said, no, it's for you. So you, when you get back, what will you do? The moment they gave you, you watch your socks open here. Slot it there. Then when you come, daddy, he says I should... There you go. Well, the moment I got here, I said, Daddy, when I got there, this is the envelope he gave me. He handed it, he said, but he gave it to you. It is yours. Take it. You see? Let me say one thing and I'll move on to the next topic. Your integrity is tested when an opportunity comes your way. That will prove that you are a man of integrity or you are not a man of integrity. Let me show you. I had joined this ministry, uh, we have grown to, that by then I think I was taking an allowance of, uh, is it 50 Ghana? Yeah. And one day a man walks to me and he says, the way you work for your boss, when he calls you, you are on time. When he says, come and do this, you do it on time. I want to employ you, I'll pay you $3,500. One Three thousand five hundred dollars. You see, because I'm preaching integrity, the woman was also. That was the day you wrote your resignation letter. That was the day you wrote your resignation letter. Hey, a human may die. God has answered the prayers. It's, oh, God, there he answers prayers. Too. But one thing I had had a covenant with my father and I've told him, I am with you to the end. So, the, the $3,500 was coming to test my integrity, whether I believe in what I said. You, what you say, when something comes up, do you stick to it or you change your mind? <laughs> I told the man, it's impossible. You can take your three thousand five hundred. I don't need it. I would rather it take my fifty Ghana. And you see, fortunately or unfortunately, if I had gone today, I would have regretted. I am happy this way. I think I'm not preaching to somebody here. 
When opportunity comes, you change. And you're like, oh, daddy, this church, ha, I'll be with you today. Ha, you see, the, what, what, you, you know people's integrity. I remember when we were coming to start the church, eh? daddy made a list. And then we were made of 30 people. Ha, so we knew that bridge ministry, the first 30 is conk. We are, and, yeah, and they are part in the year only in year 70. The day we started, we and our God we were five. The 30 has reduced by 25 straight away. I'm a lot of money catching so many air corner. I'm a car, they did, they couldn't stick by their words because, and you see, sometimes you see your integrity is tested with situations. I remember one day my mom called me and said, David, brah. Francis now didn't, excuse me uh, to use that. Francis now didn't achieve. You know. Excuse me to say, on our na now, yeah, yeah. Ne mami a sore wo ho. Obeko. Wo. Na udine chino. Oko. Na nye ya ehe na oko. You are asked this question. You have to consider what you have said. He, she asked me, I said, ehe na oko, misi mini baby a oko. Baby. You see, the reason why you can't fight for bridge ministries to become what it is. The reason why you can't fight for your boss's company to become what it is because your life is not dependent on it. <laughs> Me, hey, today, bridge ministry die. Meku. It's not how you say it. Me too, I'm dead. Because my whole life, that's why when you joke with the church, I want to cut off your head. You can't cut off anybody's head for your boss because you, you are not going anywhere with him. You just want to, he's just been a benevolent person to you. You want to enjoy his, some of his little money. You see, when we join people, let us find out where we are going with them. And when we find out where we are going with them, nothing stops. You see, it's a currency. And this one, whatever you need, eh? How many of us know Father Dixon? How many of us have heard of Father Dixon? Peace FM. Uh -huh. How many degrees does he have? No, 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 no. How many master's degrees does he have? May I just say by now the university be a money be. Per his standard, they, they, they can offer to give you one. Like they give our president one and they give some people one. But do you know what paid him to get to that level? His integrity. Now he's the general manager of all despite groups of companies. Integrity pays. <laughs> integrity pays and pays and pays. I think today I'm not speaking to somebody here. Oh no no! If I'm not talking to you, just tell me. Hey, it's almost nine. Oh, then I'm I'm to end. I'll, let me give you my last point. Then I'll be out of here. It's almost nine. <coughs> David said to Saul, "You are my father." Saul pulled a knife. I want to kill you. He says, "Still, you are my father." Whether you even chase me out of your house, you are still my father. You, you tell your pastor you are my pastor. The day he gets a scandal, he's not your pastor again. I knew it. They were saying it. He's not your pastor again. It will be left with him, his family. And they have to face it. But you told him you will be with him to the end. The Bible said, when Saul attacked David in the cave of Adullam, and he cut, he cut a piece of his cloth, 
David came standing out and said, My father. And he even insulted Abner and said, Abner, how can you leave the king agile like that for him, for me to have the chance to cut his cloth? That is a man of integrity. My next point is relationship. Relationship is a currency. Somebody say relationship is a currency. Somebody say relationship is a currency. You see, I told you money is the least of the currencies. We have anointing. <laughs> they are all currencies. Loyalty is a currency. You see, relationship can buy you a house. Whatever money can buy, relationship can buy. You didn't hear what I said. I said, whatever money can buy, relationship can buy. Relationship is worth millions of dollars. I don't know how to quantify <laughs> the worth of relationship. You, you don't value relationships. <laughs> you see it as one of the most useless things that has existed on the earth. You don't value relationship, but relationship can send you places. Relationship eh, can carry you where your, your, your debility can carry you. Relationship can take you to places where your certificate cannot take you. Relationship can pay your rent. Relationship can pay your hospital bill. Relationship can pay your school fees. Relationship can give you a doctor degree. I think I'm not talking to somebody here. How do you relate with people? Luke 252. Luke 252. And Jesus, let's read one, two, go. And Jesus increased in what? Uh huh. Stature in favor. And in favor, and in favor with, and in favor, horizontal, vertical. Horizontal alone cannot work for you on this earth. You need a vertical. I'm talking about two relationships here. And these two relationships are very important. Your relationship with God and your relationship with man. That's why I said Jesus fell in favor with God and in favor with man. Because if God is going to bless you, an angel will not come from heaven and bless you. You see, people share stories and they said a man, it was later they know that the man doesn't live anywhere because if the angel appears to you, you run away. You will run away. So it's man that you understand. What is your relationship towards man? Your fellow sister in church, your fellow brother in church, what is your relationship towards that person? I say the relationship. Me. Eh? Relationship have caused me to sleep in hotels. I've never, if I was to pay for them, my, my money cannot pay then. Five, big five stars hotel. And I don't sleep there one night too. Somebody say relationship. relationship. Somebody say relationship. Somebody say relationship. You, you. <laughs> I said relationship eh, can pay anything money can pay. I said these instruments we are using in the auditorium. Eh, let me tell you. Relationship. The, 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 it was worth about 40 something thousand Ghana CD. We didn't pay 50 pesos. Relationship. Integrity. Do you know if you try entering Flagstaff House today, they will slap you? Oh, uh, uh, is, is it not it? They will slap you. No, no matter your debility, they will slap you. But do you know if I have a relationship with this man and he's the chief of staff of the president, he can just hold my hand like this. They won't ask me anything. I'll just walk through and, and go. Relationship. 
I remember years past. Or you have back. One out of relationship, I was able to sit in the presidency of Ghana and eat. Is that it, you? Relationship. They just help. My, I, I, I'll just the relationship here, so I'll just follow it like a, like a, 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 a dog and its owner. And we're going. Then my mates who thought they have gotten there, they will see you then. Shh, I don't get anything. It'll be relationship. You, see, you don't know what relationship can do for you. That is why you don't cherish relationship. I think I'm not talking to someone. I'll, I'll end very soon. I, say, I think you're angry with me. Oh, no, eh? Not at all. Printed. Somebody say relationship. relationship. Somebody say relationship. You see, me, relationship cannot maintain itself. Somebody say, can you say relationship cannot maintain itself? It is the parties involved who maintain it. <laughs> the father of the house says, says everything is made for what? Everything is made for what? Connection. So, whatever you are doing in life, there is a connection you need. The Bible makes us to understand that one day, a woman traveled with her husband and her children to a foreign land. And when they were living in the land, the Bible said the husband died. The two children died. Then she heard that God has prospered Israel. So she was going back to Israel. Then she told her two daughter-in-laws that now, Ma'aba I'll give birth to any children again. When am I going to give birth to children and they will grow and come and marry you? Find your way. One said, Oh yeah, me na nah, no one follow you already. If you say your picky way, I can't marry, I'm way make I follow you. So you say make I go my way. Oh yeah, bye bye, I did go. But one of them said, I have a relationship with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Your people shall be my people. Where you sleep, I will sleep. What you eat, I will eat. And the Bible says she left with Ruth to the land of Israel. Out of relationship, she married one of the richest men in Israel. <laughs> Somebody say relationship. Somebody say relationship. I'm talking about Ruth and Naomi. <laughs> when Obadiah died, and his children were being captured to be slaves because he owes a debt. And they were not able to pay the debt. The prophet came and said, what do you have? They said, we have a little oil. The prophet said, I can increase the oil for you. But for me to increase the oil for you, I want you to have more vessels. Hear me. If the woman didn't have relationship with her neighbors, could she have gone for more vessels? You are poor because you, you don't have good relationships. I think I'm not preaching to somebody here. <laughs> you see, you are not wise when you buy everything with money. Me, let me tell you, I've owned three cars which I didn't buy with money. I bought all with relationships. <laughs> Sam, let me use you as an example. Do you know if primate becomes a big empire huh? and it's, it's worth millions of dollars, do you know <laughs> you can owe a whole empire without you paying a cent? What is it? It's just a relationship you have with your boss. Today, Father Dixon drives most one of the expensive Rolls Royce. He drives most, most of the expensive cars. He's not driving them because he has, he has done anything. All he did was he had a relationship with his boss. He lived with his integrity, and those things have bought him all that he has. The houses he lives in. You, 
What who, what do you have? You two, you say, me, me, when you born me, my nose smells for me. Me, 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 verbatim, I'm quoting the verbatim, my nose smells. So me, when you come beside me and you are not behaving with me, I will insult you and I will go. Continue insulting. You see, you have missed that job opportunity because you didn't have a relationship with her. It's good, eh, you and God, you, eh, you and God, you, 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 the gap between you and God is an inch. Eh? It's an inch face to face. But I tell you, God will not descend from heaven and give you what he wants. He will use man. If the man is you, as in, you don't have a good relationship with the man. Will the man present it to you? Let me share a story with you. When I was getting married, me, me, I have stories too. Sam, you can sit. When I was getting, hey, my money was finished. Hey, my, I turned everywhere I can turn. Hey, I've done what I can do. Then. I got the understanding that there are some people I'm not relating with them very well based on somebody's calculation. So I, I sat down one evening and said, all these people, I will relate with them well. One of them there, my father called me, I said that story here, and he spoke to me that I should do this. And it opened a certain door. One of the persons which I didn't have good relationships. So I was there. I called the person. I said, how are you doing? I hope everything is well. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. He said, ah, why are you calling me? I said, well, I just want to check up on you and see how you are doing. Do you know, the moment the phone ended, after about two hours, I heard my phone beep. Pee -pee. When I opened, alert. Momo, alert, thousand Ghana city. I said, hey, yeah. My breakthrough is in somebody's pocket. And me too, I say I won't talk to the person. Hey, you are saying. You see, a lot of us, you are going hungry because you don't relate well. I said, when I was a single man, eh, living in cantonments, that time my mom was also living in Ashalbutri. Out of relationship, I don't buy food though. Morning, afternoon, evening. Ah! A pie? I'm a living legend. I don't so far. I have good relationship with our neighbors. So they all know my mom wasn't a rose. When they cook, you see it sounding in my room. Sounding in my room. You. You are here. You, you, you are crying about your university uh, registration fee. But do you know if you had a good relationship with this man, you could have paid your school fees without you knowing. Somebody say relationship. Somebody say relationship. Somebody say relationship. You see, the king sacked his wife for not obeying him. He was looking for a wife. And he called all the beautiful ladies in the province. And he said, I want to marry one of you. Hear me. The ladies came. Do you know one significant thing? All the ladies thought they were a class. They were going to be the queen. So they didn't respect the king's chamberlain but one lady said ah, there is something about this man that I need to get let me relate with this man despite I'm going to be a queen I'm not the queen yet but let me relate with this man and per her relationship with the man she knew what the king likes she knew what the, the king loves. So she didn't wear what she thought would help her. Out of relationship, she became a queen. You, 
what are you doing? You see, when you meet, you are going to seek for a job somewhere. You get to the gate, you see the gate, man. You talk. Yeah, yeah, the degree, but you get my old dean quasi. I said, me the big gate, man, me na me messing call. Relationship. Apparently, there's something on social media when you see they said the CEO himself was the gate man. Say you people, you are not worthy of the job. Relationship. Esther became a a queen because she had relationship with the Chamberlain. The Chamberlain was able to tell her, wear this colors, wear this, don't wear this. The king likes this. He doesn't like this. You, you are too wise. Yeah, you know friend. We are almost small here. No, are They are servants. Your relationship with people. I think I'm not preaching to somebody this day. <sighs> your failure or your success is based on the relationship you have. You can relate with somebody and you fail in your life forever. You can relate with somebody and you'll be successful forever. So watch the kind of relationships you put yourself in. And last, I'll just say something later, but then I'll sit down because my time is up. Loyalty. Somebody say loyalty. Somebody say loyalty. It's also a currency. <laughs> and what loyalty can give you, money cannot give you. <laughs> you see, it is stated that loyalty is a principle that every leader or everyone who wants to be great in life must have. But I've come to understand that loyalty is a grace. <laughs> in my years of ministry, I've come to understand loyalty is a grace. If you don't carry it, you can't enjoy it. It's a grace. It's, not a, it's no more principle to me. It's a grace. It is required of stewards that they be found faithful. 1 Corinthians 4 2. That they be found, whatever has been given to you, are you faithful with it? Whatever has been assigned to you, you are a steward of God's money. How are you being loyal with the money? The reason why God is not sending money your way again because when he gave you money to take care of it, when the kingdom needs it, you are presented to the kingdom. You chop the money. You were not loyal. Even the tithe you have to pay, you didn't pay. You enjoy the tithe in addition. You were not found faithful as a steward. My last statement then, let me see it. The Bible said David was in the cave of Adullam and 400 men came to him. And the 400 men said, we have heard that you are going to be a king one day. <laughs> but we are going to be with you. We are going to help you. We are going to help you. We'll do. And the Bible makes us to understand that they fought and they did everything they can do. When you read First Samuel 30, they went, they went for a war. When they came back, the Bible said their camp had been raided and their wives had been taken away and they all started crying. And the Bible said David encouraged himself and recovered all, you know, the story and everything. Out of it all, these men remained loyal. And David became a king of Israel. They fought till they, they were not thinking about themselves. They were not thinking about what they want. The only thing they wanted that one day they will help David to become the king of Israel. What you are doing, what is your aim? What is your loyalty to it? Your boss that you are serving, what is your loyalty to him? To the extent that they serve David as a king to the extent that one day they went to, David went to fight and they were about killing him. They said, no, 
You are the light of Israel. You cannot fight. We will still remain loyal. We are great men. We can. Uh, one of us killed Goliath's brother. You, you killed one with five feet. Me, I killed the one with six. But still, I am loyal. I can't let you die. You. You. What is your loyalty to your pastor? What is your loyalty to your church? What is your loyalty to your, to your business? What is your loyalty to the, uh, your employer? You think about yourself. They didn't think about themselves. One was too loyal to the extent that David realized that on the loyalty they to Israel, it was to David. So after David was dying, he said, Solomon, Aqua, we when come no behow. Because his loyalty is to me. That is Joab. Kill him. Then have your peace in the land. Tonight, I have come your way. And I've shared with you certain things that can make you richer than money. Can we please be on that? Keep doing for Jesus. Take your seats. Keep clapping for Jesus. Keep doing it for Jesus. Everything he's saying is so practical. Um, his message has turned my mind into something else for tomorrow. Tomorrow, all of us will sit down and then you ask questions because a lot of you have questions to ask. Because sometimes when we speak like this, you don't understand it. So I, I understand if the fool because I see him live it, talk it. Yes, he slept in big time hotels. Some of them are in there, what that? <laughs> and if you are also not loyal, you also be jealous because of who is putting him in the hotel. But the truth is that if somebody is very loyal to you, it's very easy to become loyal to the person. And there is something we call the law of reciprocity. This morning I was talking to one person like that about it. And the person asked me an interesting question. And the question was, if somebody is around me and is taking care of me, making sure I'm okay, what do I do so I don't lose that person? And like I talked, Pastor David was standing there when he was preaching. I told the person, become a person of value. And I was like, how do I become a person of value? And I said, it's simple. When you don't feed what feeds you, what is feeding you will die out. And when it dies out, you will die. How? Somebody is busily feeding you. You must also look back and find out what is it that I can also do in this person's life such that nobody else can do it better than me. Your boss pays you. That's true. Your father gives you money. Pays your fees. And you think that after it's your responsibility, I didn't ask you to bring me to the world. <laughs> it's unfortunate. But you must come to a place and ask yourself, what is it that I'm also going to invest in this person's life? That if this person wakes up, he will think of me. Now, right now, what is it if you are working for somebody? The question I want to ask you is this. What will your boss, what will make your boss call you at 12 midnight? Your boss doesn't even know that you have the potential for it. What will make your pastor call you at 1 a.m.? If you can't find one, there is no relationship. Okay, right now, let me go. If my car is not working, who will I call? 
it will shock you. He might be the third or fourth person. <laughs> I'll call him. It's, it's likely I'll call him, but maybe I'll call maybe Pastor David and go and sleep. The rest as to how he gets it done, I don't care. But you see, you must come to a place where you fit so much in a person's life. Like even Judas placed himself so well in Jesus' life that he knew he would betray him. I like what Pastor David said. Don't become others. Look, better you become an enemy. <laughs> there is, I've, I've dealt with a lot of serious things. There's a guy once, we were dealing with some security issues in this nation. And the first time I met him, I called him suspicious. My instincts told me this guy is terrible. But even though we called him suspicious, we used him for about eight years. They say we are sacking. I said, no, no, you can't sack him. He will do the dirty jobs. That job, I can't do it. You need somebody who is very dirty, very disloyal. Even disloyal people are needed. They will go there. Let us release him. He goes into our enemy camps. And when he comes, let's give him food. He will tell us everything. So we release him. We can let him go on six months. Then we'll call him. And when he comes, we all play, oh, we miss you. How are you? Then we eat. He will spill everything out fast. Then we let him go again. <laughs> so we knew his importance as an enemy. What is it about you that if the one who you depend on can he said, I'm calling you on this, if there is nothing like that, these three things he mentioned, you don't have integrity, relationship, loyalty. Which one again did he mention? What? Value. You don't have value. My spiritual father says it. I have people telling me, even though I'm in Ghana, there are things I do for him. I remember there was a time my spiritual father he knows we don't have money in Africa. Put it on the page. We have, we have a page with over a thousand some hundred and something pastors. He pastors. And I'm the least he has ever supported. That his AC in his church building is gone down. He needs to raise like $14,000 or so to replace it by Sunday. Or else the weather will be something. I called on my pastors. I said, let's do some contribution and send it to the man. Later he told me that the whole world were the only people who sent money. The whole world. And we were the people he was not expecting. And there are people he has given them $1 million, $2 million, $10 million. There were the people he was thinking that, oh, the weaving stand in church and said they are raising funds to come and take it. And when we raised the money, we didn't ha have access to raise the money here. So I called one of my sons in the U.S. that take the money. You have a family here. You will be sending them money. So I will send the local money to your family here. Then you go and give the money to my spiritual father so that he can fix the problem. What is your value? I had in power. Now, when we pray, when a pastor teaches on healing, what do you expect? I didn't hear you. What? Okay. If you don't have integrity, I want you to be on your feet. I want to pray with you. <laughs> Do you know, he says something about Psalm 15, a man of integrity is a man who swears to his own head. If I say I'm going to do something, come hell, come water, come fire, it is done. Go and sleep. In my house, we don't make promises. Not that we are a witness. By your word, is up. If I tell my daughter that in the morning when you wake up, you will see me. I'm dead. That day too, she will sleep 10, she's not up. And sometimes I have an emergency, I leave. By the time she wakes up, my wife signals me that she's up. I call her. I'm very sorry. I left home. Then daddy owe me. I said, I owe you. I said, tomorrow you will stay. The following day you will stay as I'll make it up. 
and I stay two days in the morning. He has to wake up and meet me. You know what I'm teaching my little girl? Integrity. Keeping to your word. And anybody who doesn't have integrity cannot sustain marriage. Because marriage is words. I, I, do, do, da, 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 da. Simple. Integrity. And a lot of us don't have it. You know what you must do, but you won't do it. If I have to sign a check for you, and the check will not go through, I'll not wait for that day to tell you to go through. Because I know to you, you are playing with the money. A week, two weeks, three days, I'll call you and say, I'm sorry, due to A, B, C, and D, I can't honor this check. Can you give me this time? It is called integrity. It's called what? You are quiet here. I always meet people, and one of the things I tell myself, that if I live your life, you must miss me. I'll tell you. And I don't, I don't expect you to miss me in one year. The least is three days. The value of the way I'll place my life into your life if within three days you don't come looking for me, I failed. And I'm not talking about giving somebody money. No, 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 not that. The kind of impact I will have over your life, you must look for me again. Some say integrity, loyalty relationship. I didn't hear you. Now look at someone say, who is feeding you? And what are you feeding the person back with? What did the person say? Can you imagine that you pay Ghana water gives you water you don't pay. Very soon you run out of water. True of us. Can you imagine Ghana gives you electricity and you don't pay. Very soon you run out of electricity. Not because they want to give electricity, but the power to generate it will not be there. And a lot of times people's hands are tied. Not because they don't have what it takes, but because you do not give back what has been given to you. And Pastor David said, uh, loyalty is what? Grace. You need it. If I ask right now that where, where I go, you go. Where you live, I live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be your God. How many of you lift up and say, man, God, I want to do that with you. What if I slap you? You didn't tell me you would slap me. <laughs> but if you can't do something, never agree to if I If I send you a message that tomorrow there's leaders meeting and you get it and it takes blue too and you can't come, should I send you a message that you can't come? Not coming is not integrity. And they had to teach my little girl this. No, you know the story about when the little boy or girl keeps saying there's a lion or there's a bear. There's a lion out there. I don't even know that story. There's a lion out there. The day there was a real lion, the villagers thought he was joking. Every day you are sick. The day you are truly sick. Your boss will not believe you. Maybe one day you are genuinely, this mistake is genuine, it's not intentional. Look, I have people around me that if I give them work and they don't do it, I will pay them for they not doing it. Because I know that it will not be intentional. They didn't do it, but I'll still pay them. 
for not doing it. And I know people too. <laughs> that if you give them their job, they will still not do it. Look at someone say, where is your loyalty? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. What is the best thing you say? No, loyalty is to the one who takes care of me, the one that feeds me, the one that's a lie. Last I was handling a problem. Very, very, very dynamic situation. It nearly turned to world war in my office. Well, I've been around this man for a long time and I know all his business cartels. I know the MPs, the ministers, you name them. If they call me and look at the number and I don't pick it, they'll call him and say, ah, your pastor, he doesn't like us and he doesn't pick. And so I'll tell him, call him now. Now when they call, I'll pick him because he said he should pick. And so he got this family pastor to who he started introducing. Within one week, pa, 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 pa. oh, business here. He was how can somebody introduce you to his business partner and you go and do a business with a person without a person's knowledge? You know what you call that? I'm being smart. You are being foolish. You know what you just did? You just closed down the relationship you have with the one who introduced you. And sometimes when you take the business some of these people you ask them, so what do you think? I always tell people that if you want to know how people end up, ask Martin Amidu. Ask who? From NDC vice presidential candidate to MPP special prosecutor and I can't stand for any position in Ghana anywhere because even though he was being loyal to a fault he was not loyal to a cause so at the end of the day no political divide will like you everybody knows that you can betray us Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying, right? Are you here? You've gone home. How many of you say that you do something and whether it hurts you or it doesn't hurt you, you do it? Let me your hands up. You say, I'm going to do something. And whether it hurts you or it doesn't hurt you, you do it. Hey, is that an issue? Hey, This, this afternoon I was there two, is it last week when the bishop the one I called Shumafo came, he came to meet a man of God in my office, telling me so many problems he was having this afternoon I was there, the Lord said check your momo I checked it he said Lord what is it, he said all your money you have is mine, yes? I said yes Lord he said send the money to him he needs money and last week Lord when he spoke to me about it, you didn't touch my heart he said now I have touched And funny enough, when I sent him the money, he, he has the impudence to call me. He called, I didn't pick. The wife called, I didn't pick. He sent me text, I didn't mind it. You know why? He can't help me. I don't need his thanksgiving. But his wife, he sent a text message to thank me. Because any time you receive the applause of men, you refuse the appraisal of God. <laughs> 